Hey everybody, it's Kevin here for you for another Hawkeye episode review. This is going to be Hawkeye episode 3, Echoes. I mean, <laughs> Echoes. Sorry, I think I put a D in there. So, uh, let's get into it. So, the episode begins off with a little recap from the last two episodes. But after that, we get a little backstory for Maya. Well, I think that's her, um, you know, yeah, that, that, that's her real name. Anyway. But we get a, we get a little backstory for Echoes. We see her as a little girl in school and she's deaf, so she's having a bit of a problem hearing a teacher. But because of her ability, sort of like Taskmaster ability, she can sort of hear, not hear, but she can like lip read really well. So she sees a teacher talking and she's like, oh, okay, so she's saying words, she's like, subdue it, turn the page, she's like, oh, okay. We see that. Then we get this nice moment with her and her father in her room where she was asking her dad if she would be, I mean, when is she going to go to the school for other, for people like her? And her father's had to do something cute, like, be like, hey, uh, you know, this, you're one of a kind. Ain't nobody like you. So then she's like, no, when am I going to be able to go to the school for deaf people? <laughs> you know, like, you know, I mean, that, that was sweet. That was nice, but no, I'm going to go to the school for deaf people. So it'll be a bit easier for me in classes. He wants to bring her into that school, but he just doesn't have the money for that type of school, so he's sorry. And it was also a point in the conversation where she asked, are dragons are real? Can they come to our world? And her father was like, if dragons are real, they come to our world, they become strong. It was like, this, this whole dragon, like, talk of the conversation, I thought it was funny, because I initially started thinking, well, like, we just got Shang-Chi, like, uh, like two months ago. <laughs> like, it was kind of funny, so either this was, like, really convenient timing to have this episode come out just a few months after Shang-Chi, when we got the dragons, or it might be connected to Shang-Chi. Maybe, I doubt it, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> if it is, I pretty crazy connecting there Marvel but it, it's probably just a really big coincidence like they saw that like they read like you know they're rendering the episode watching it dragon hey didn't say she come on like a few months ago yeah they did this okay hey that's cool <laughs> okay that was dumb uh, that was funny that was really funny by the way we cut again and she's taking karate classes and her father says that and her father's a part of the Chester Mafia her father says that he will uh, she, he gives her some advice about how since you're kind of small, when you fight your opponent, it's more about speed than size or strength. She's like, yeah. He also said he won't be able to take her home at the classes. Her uncle's going to do that. And we don't get to see her uncle, but we see some big guy in a suit. He walks over to her, pinches her cheek. And I'm like, you know, like, yeah, but you know, like, hey, how you doing, man? Like, you know, pinches her cheek and laughs. And it's a white hand. Now, a lot of people are saying this is Kingpin. I'm going to show you the big white dude <laughs> right here in a minute. A lot of people are saying this is Kingpin, which I can see that being Kingpin. They go do pinches her cheek, and then we just get her into her karate battle right in the next shot. And we also find out she's a prosthetic. She has a prosthetic leg. Now, in the comics, the only thing I've been hearing from other videos are she's just... <clears throat> Sorry, the only thing I've been hearing is that she has the ability to, like, Taskmaster to mimic your moves and stuff, and she's deaf. That's the only thing I've been hearing. I never heard that she has a prosthetic, so I guess the prosthetic thing is just a unique thing for the MCU. They bring it back later in the episode because in the later in this episode, she fights Hawkeye. Hawkeye grabs a hockey puck, no, a hockey stick, I mean, and swings it at her, and she brings her leg up, and it breaks, and he's like, what in the world? But I think that, you know, that was supposed to be the leg. That's a prosthetic, so she doesn't feel anything, so, you know, that was really good to have it here. So I guess this whole prosthetic leg thing is specific to the MCU and not from the comic, which is fine, I guess. I mean, she's still a really good fighter, as we'll see. Later on this episode, and right now when she takes out this big guy, but you know it's it's, it's whatever. I was uh, it was it's pretty unique, you know. It doesn't have to be exactly like the comics, but you know, basically somewhat, <coughs> basically somewhat. I'm sorry, hold up. This this right here, man. I hate this. I hate it so much. Sorry, something's going on behind the camera. <laughs> uh, so annoying. I swear it's so annoying. Anyway. Right after we get that, we get another screen, well not screen, but we, we cut to her being a bit older, and she's training in a boxing ring, whoever she's fighting, she takes out pretty easily, and she goes to a little garage type of place, and we see the Ronin taking out a bunch of dudes, well a bunch of the tracksuit mafias, and we actually see him like stab him, blood comes out, and she's looking through each window, she's pretty cool, she looks through one window, sees the Ronin stabs the tracksuit mafia, take the sword out, do a flip and she goes to the other window because, you know, the windows are blocked by the concrete. So she sees something. Oh, my goodness. You know, I have to run over to the next window. Oh, my goodness. She keeps doing that. So she finally gets to the door. She finally unlocks it, kicks it down. She runs into the room and he finishes.
Jason, stabbing her father, taking the sword out, jumps through the window, but she goes to comfort, not yet, I was going to say confront, but comfort her father, because, you know, obviously she wants to go after Ronan, but, you know, her father's bleeding out on the ground, so she goes to comfort her father, and I'm sorry, I need, like, five seconds to just breathe, because I'm a bit out of breath from trying to run in here, do this, so, uh, please, excuse me, my bad, I'm so sorry. I needed that. I'm so sorry uh, if I happen to do that. <laughs> I'm so sorry if I happen to do that. If you heard, I was running out of breath when I was talking. <laughs> so she, he tells her to go away and fly her his little dragon. And his hand was on his chest where he got the where the sword gets cut in, and there's a lot of blood in his hand. And he touches her face, and we see like a hand marking on her face, which is sort of like the comics. Now in the comics, the hand marking like I have in the thumbnail, y'all see. Is on her, it's like around her eye, it's like right here, like the face marking, but it's supposed to be like a little nod, I don't know how she gets it, it's not a scar, because in the comics you see it's like white paint, unless somebody had like white paint on their hand and smacked her, or, <laughs> that'd be kind of dumb, just smacked her, you know what I'm saying, or maybe she painted it, I don't know how she got it in the comics, but in the comics it's like white, and over like her eye and half her face, it's not like right here, or they could change it up for the MC, they have it right here, see the one could work, I don't know why she got it in the comics, but we get the title card, and then we cut back to where Hawkeye and Kate is, which is kind of, so unless this was like 5 in the morning coming up to 6, because it was nighttime, it was clearly nighttime last episode where they tied Kate and Hawkeye to the little like ponies that you put quarters in and they start to move, You, they, it was clearly nighttime. And right after that, they caught them, taped them up, the dude instantly went to Echo, told him we got them, he says get out. We cut back to the sequence, and it's clear, and it's daytime, like in the morning, in the afternoon, or something. Like so I'm like, they were just goofing around with them all night, and she's finally coming out. What took her so long? Unless it was like 6 a.m. and the sun is finally starting to come up, and now the sun is up. Okay, but last episode it was clearly nighttime. Now it's daytime, so they just been goofing around with them. What do you mean by goofing around, Captain? You, they've been putting quarters in there, having the little ponies move up and down. They're just Stuck like this, so you know, right? And they're just laughing their heads off, trash the mafia, seeing like, oh, look at the mighty Hawkeye, right? And the pony, <laughs> just scooping around, and then the ride stops. And they're like, hey, hey, get more quarters, get more quarters. Like, they, they're just, just, just goofing around. And it's, there was a moment where Kate's like, hey, look, I know you're mad, but I swear, I have everything under control. Hawkeye said, I was just finna clear your name from the Ronin suit until you came crashing into the ship. Well, he didn't do this, he, his hands were tied up, but you know, before you came. Crashing into the ship. <laughs> oh. Then there was this another funny moment where this one track to Mafia dude starts to like yell on the phone. He's on the phone, he starts yelling at Spasm, and he kicks some boxes over. And I'm like, hey, what's the matter? The Kate said, hey man, you good? So he walks over to her, and he says that he bought some Imagine Dragon tickets to give to his girlfriend for a Christmas present. She's like, okay. But now she wants to bring her sister to take the tickets with her. And. Basically, so, okay, sorry, throughout this whole conversation, he says his, his girlfriend is not like Imagine Dragons, but he bought the tickets for her for, like, a fake gift that they can go together. I guess the girlfriend found out about that, or, you know, put two and two together, like, you know, I don't like them, why are you giving them to me? You just want to go, but try to make it as a gift for me, so now I'm going to take my sister, so he's mad about that, and Kate's like, you know what, maybe you should just both apologize to each other, tell her you're sorry, and before she could finish, she's like, okay, that's how I'm going, you know, wait, wait, think, you know, keep, keep the idea in your head, I'm going to get some pen and paper, like, he was, he, so he, 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 he doubts he can remember all that, so he's like, hey, wait right there, I'm going to get a pen and some paper, you, you, you put that down in your head, I'll be right back, I'll be right back, and she runs off, and then, <laughs> the kid's like, see, you got to have some communication, have some nice, and then boom, Echoes, and this dude named Kazi walks into the room, and Echoes, he sees the hearing aid and unties Clint for Hawkeye. And then they start to sign language. He's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not deaf. I'm just hard of hearing. I'm sorry. And then she asks him, who is Ronan? Then Hawkeye's like, uh, uh, I need cookies. Like, he says, I need, I want another cookie. And sign language, like, he, he does this. I don't know, sign language. But he's like, I need a cookie. And sign language, and she's like, ah, and ties him back up. And throughout this whole conversation, she keeps asking who is Ronan, because she really wants to know who Ronan is, because she killed him. I mean, because Ronan killed the father. Hawkeye says that the person that killed Ronan, well, she, he says Ronan is dead. How do you know? I was there when it happened. Who did it? Black Widow. 
She was like, oh, the person that killed Ronan is already dead. How convenient. Yes, but she doesn't really believe him. And then she starts to talk to Kate. And then while she's talking to Kate, she asks her, why were you wearing the suit? And then she tries to explain to her, but then she just flashes of her father dying to Ronan. And she starts to choke out Kate. And she's like, you know, like getting really scared. And, you know, she's choking her out, finna kill her. And she starts to explain that it was at an auction. I was just waiting until it wouldn't be caught at the auction. And then Kazi pushes Kate. I mean, sorry, not pushes Kate. Pushes Echo's off. I'm like, what are you doing? We are interrogating them for the whereabouts of Ronan. You can't just kill her right now. She's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All this all was going on. We keep getting, like, tiny little shots of Hawkeye. His hands are tied behind his back. At first, they were on the front. But now they're tied behind his back. And he keeps scraping them against the pony so he can break the tape. He's like, hey, Kate, 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 Kate. This is in the moment. Sorry, he's not doing it because he's tied up. Kate, this is the moment to get scared. Get together, baby. This is my kid. You gotta see your mom. It's gonna be okay, okay? Okay. And he finally breaks the tape. He jumps and he runs. And everybody runs after him besides Kazi. Kazi's the only one that stays behind. I hold a gun to Kate's head. And at first, he was just holding the gun to the ground. But while Hawkeye is fighting everybody, <laughs> like, she's like, hold, hold up. How'd you do that? And she starts to, she tries to, like, <laughs> she tries to, like, you know, scrape. The tape against the middle that she's on, but his thing was wood and she's like, this isn't working. And then we see Hawkeye fight everybody. Then we cut back to Kate, like, man, what? and then she tries, she tries to bite the tape. She tries to, she tries to bite the tape off. And the guy's like, hey, what are you doing? Stop, stop. He's <laughs> like, you know, stop doing that. I think I saw on Emergency Awesome's video that Kazi and her dated in the comics, but I don't, but he says, eh, they might not date in here. Either, either Emergency Awesome said that here she filmed. Or heavy spoilers. One of those three said that. I think it was. I think it was a mercy option though. I think it was a mercy option. It was like the three big reviews I watched right before I did my review. I watched the episode. I did everything in me. And I watched those three guys. I'm okay. I'm ready for this. <laughs> I'm ready. Oh yeah, yeah. I got ahead of myself. I gotta skip through that part. Everything I just said. Okay, so we see Hawkeye fight everybody, and we see. <laughs> yeah, let me just show you. We see Kate. <laughs> we see Kate try to bite through it. Uh, oh yeah, oh I forget, I forget. Um, in the conversation, she says that you rely, Echo says you rely too much on technology. Hawkeye's like, uh, well, uh, I don't know what you mean. Uh, my go-to weapon is a bow and arrow, you know, <laughs> like a, a big piece of metal and some string and a bow. And she, and, and um, Kazi was translating for them, and Kazi's like, no, no, that's a bow and arrow. I mean, you're hearing it, you'd be better without it. And he's like, uh, I don't know. And in the middle of that fight, he takes down a ton of the tracksuit mafias by climbing, climbing onto all the shelves and like the store to end and he starts to climb he starts to like run on top of them and when he runs he kicks it down so he can follow them and then him and Echo start to fight and it's a pretty good fight sequence like she's pretty good and she instantly knocks the hearing aid out of his ear and he steps on it because she knows you know you need, need that to hear so she instantly disarms him with his hearing <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm stepping on it but this is Kate trying to bite <laughs> sorry I uh, went a bit ahead of myself this is Kate Trying to bite. This is Kate trying to bite through. <laughs> I don't know the other side, but this is Kate trying to bite <laughs> through the tape. And then we do see Hawkeye and Echo fight a little bit. This is the scene I was talking about where he goes on top of the shelves and he's kicking them so they can fall on the track to mafias. And right after that, him and Echo start to fight. And Echo, she's a pretty decent fighter. And this is the scene I was talking about when she smashes, when he smashes the hockey stick on her leg. But since it's a prosthetic, it doesn't really hurt her. And she instantly takes out the hearing aid and steps on it. But uh, right before this, they do start to fight hand to hand a little bit. And she's really good at fighting, as we can see. Even though, like, obviously, we saw it in the flashback. And here we see it really in depth, too. But she's able to go toe to toe with Hawkeye, who was a pretty skilled fighter. So you can see right here. Yeah, it's really bad. I won't keep talking through this because normally we can't even just show it without talking because we can copyright it. But this is a whoop, boom! <laughs> She's a really good deaf fighter, as we can see right there. <laughs> as we can see. That's the, I'm, uh, that's the, 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 and he's able to disarm, or he's able to hold back Echo because he shoots two arrows, and those two arrows like go crisscross around her neck, and she's stuck like that. It doesn't look like it, but we get another scene where she's like this, so it's like it's like attached to her clothes, and it like crisscross, so she's stuck to the wall. She's like, you know, trying to stick it out. So, so he disarms Arrow, 
Right after that, we know why he's called Hawkeye. He just starts to go stupid with his bow and arrows. Because he's called Hawkeye for a reason, you know what I mean? Look at this. He instantly hits Kazi and then helps Kate get out of her restraints. That is a nice shot right there. That's really longer than I thought. My bad. <laughs> that was really longer than I thought. Then we get this cool scene right here where he just digs himself into the ball pit so no one can see him. Then he instantly jumps out. And then stabs the two dudes in the foot. And after that, he starts to snipe everybody. And then he does this cool backward snipe move where he doesn't even look at the person he's sniping. Which I love, I love scenes like that. I really do. I do, I do love scenes like that. Look at this. He takes out one guy while Kate's fighting. Kate, Kate's a really good fighter, too. I, love, I really love Kate. I'm trying, I'm just trying to get to the scene where he like does that backward snipe move. Oh, yeah, here, here this one comes up. One, two, and the third one. Not even looking. Not even looking. All oh, goes right through his hand, too. Ugh, not even looking. I don't think I'm doing that right, but you know, not, not even looking. That was nice. That was nice. I love Hawkeye, man. I love him. And they're able to take out Kazi because Kate, she does punch him a bit more. And then Hawkeye, no, sorry, sorry. Kate runs over to one of the pillars and he, he slides. It's going to be kind of, I'm going to get caught there. It's going to be kind of confusing there say exactly what Kate does, because she like, yeah, no, I'm gonna get told that, so she runs over to a pillar and slides on the ground, and then she does a sweep move and takes him out, well, no, that, this doesn't take him out, it's when Hawkeye runs over to him and hits him over the hill with his bow, right here, boom, <laughs> that's what happens, I was, I was trying to like, you know, how do I say this, you know, she does that sweep move, but she grabs the pillar that like swings, Anyway, right after this, they run outside and they find a car. And we get that scene from the trailers where Hawkeye and her are getting in a car chase. And she has an angel cane and throwing out those trick arrows. And at first, they were going to go into a something, something challenging. But Hawkeye's like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, uh, ruin a challenger. So they take another car. So he smashes the window and starts to hot wire. Then he says, hey, you have to drive. Okay, like, I can't drive. I can't drive. And, you know, Hawkeye's hearing it. He's out. So he's like. I can't hear you. I can't hear. I'm assuming you're saying, yes, you are driving. But then track shoes come out, start to shoot, so Kate just jumps in the car. He's like, oh, shoot. Oh, I gotta drive. So he drives off. And the camera work in this scene is really cool because each time the car turns, the camera turns with the car. It's like it's like, it's like the camera is the car and it turns with it, which is really cool. I really like how the camera work was done in this scene. Look at this. So as soon as Hawkeye turns the car, the whole camera turns with the car. And like the camera is the car. See? That, that, that was a pretty cool camera shot. That, that is really cool. And they start to drive. And so in case, like, you know, obviously she has to take out these drivers that's trying to, that's trying to pull them over or to crash them. So she grabs Hawkeye's quiver and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Ain't no more regular arrows in there. It's only trick arrows. Trick arrows? She got trick arrows? Because we know, I think it was episode one, she asked him, you have trick? No, no, it was, it was episode two. Do you have any trick arrows? He's like, no, I don't, I don't carry those. What are you talking about? Like, you know, like he, he was just capping, obviously. So she takes out some of his trick arrows and starts to use them. One arrow is just like some putty. It's like like it looks like the putty they use like in any cartoons or game where as soon as you shoot it, that foam starts to come out and get stuck. That comes out on one car, but it doesn't take it out. Then she uses the arrow that we saw from the trailers where it was an explosive and it took out the whole it, it exploded the whole car. And she was like, What? <laughs> like, you know, you, you got arrows like that in your car? <laughs> oh wait, I put the I clicked the rewind button. My bad. You got arrows like that in your car? That, that, that is crazy. They use an the acid arrow to take out two street lights or well, two traffic lights. At first, I thought it was just like slow down Echoes and Kazi in their car, but it didn't even hit them. So the second thing I was thinking about was, oh, because they took out two street lights, the car, some cars on the other side are gonna start to come in, so they're gonna stop Echoes and Kazi because they were the two. That was like the last car trying to get them. That didn't happen either. So I'm like, what? What was the point of that? The third thing I was thinking, okay, so I guess they're trying to run a red light or two red lights. They don't want to, you know, because when you run a red light, it takes a picture of you. So I thought that's why. So it's either one of those three. It says, not get a picture of you for another red light. Two, it was supposed to slow them down, but it didn't really look like it did anything. Three, it's supposed to confuse the cars and make them all come into each other so it can stop Kazi and Echoes. That didn't happen either, so I don't know why. They do take out another car by using a grapple hook arrow where they have to back up and go into a bunch of uh, Christmas tree sales, and then Kate Bishop shoots, uh, well, first he shoots a suction cup arrow. She's like, that, that thing sucks. I'm not even doing anything. <laughs> I'm not even doing anything. And the second time, they start to back up into a bunch of Christmas trees, 
and she shoots a grappler hook arrow that has a ton of grappler hooks she shoot out, grabs a ton of Christmas trees and slam them into a car and has to stop. And then we get this uh, one funny scene where Hawkeye he can't really he he can't hear Kate like that. So Kate at first Kate and Hawkeye were driving regularly like frontwards and Kate has to try to move maneuver herself backwards to the car. But she's like, Man, this would be so much easier if we're facing the other way. Hawkeye since he's an archer, he instantly knows that so he sees Kate. He doesn't hear her say that, but he needs to say, Hey, it'll be easier when we were on the other side, huh? And she he says that right at the same time. She says that. She's like, Yeah. Hey, we were communicating, but you know, it wasn't really communicating because he didn't actually hear her say that. He's just saying that because he's like, oh, wait, hold up. Like, yeah, if I, if I was doing this, yeah, it would be much easier if the car was facing the other way. So he actually like backs up and starts to drive backwards, which is really cool. I like that. And then they eventually get to the bridge. And when they get to the bridge, they shoot, I mean, I say, Kate shoots a, like a smoke arrow inside of Kazi's and Echo's car, and it crashes, and he's like, oh, you gotta be kidding me, the car crashed anyway, and now they only got a few arrows left, so Hawkeye, he takes out one arrow, and says, hey, you aim up with the arrow, and I'm gonna use this, but this is just a regular arrow, Kate starts to say, no, it's okay, just do what I say, okay, so Kate shoots an arrow up, and then Hawkeye, he looks at the arrow Kate's shooting, big yard, and then we see at the tip of his arrow, it says pin. He shoots Kate's arrow, makes it a gigantic arrow because it has the pimp technology in it, and it instantly takes out the truck. <laughs> I was like, yo, that is cool. At first, I was thinking, like, what What are they going to do? So I was going to feel like, huh? But then, you know, it was it was a pimp tech arrow with the giant, with the, with the pimp tech. So Kate shoots her arrow all the way up in the sky, and Hawkeye shoots his to make it gigantic, and then we see it says pimp. Oh, that was so cool. I was, I was trying to put a pimp, like, thing into it, but I couldn't find a good render anything and <laughs> it takes out that car which is so cool that, that, that was a cool shot that, that was really cool that game six of the case in the air come on Hawkeye that was real smart and then he runs over to the car takes the suction cup arrow then they both jump off of the bridge and then he does that cool backwards shot and he shoots the bridge a grapple hook arrow comes out they both swing off it land on a train and it's gonna fall off but Hawkeye uses the suction cup arrow to like to hold on to and he holds Kate been able to survive and they go inside the train. Then we get a funny moment where they just sitting down trying to catch their breath. And Kate's like, man, you should take out some dogs. You can't be cooped up for too long. I wonder how long that Hawkeye says, you're not wrong. And then, you know, she, she's thinking that you just dream of her. When you call yourself one of the great, one of the world's greatest archers. She's like, wow, really? Like, you know, like, a nice sweet moment there. You should really take out the dog. You can't be cooped up for too long. I wonder how long, because, you know, he didn't hear Kate say that because he can't, doesn't have his hearing aid. So that, that was a pretty funny moment. But after that, we get this nice, sweet scene, which I don't want to mess it up with my janky um, retelling of it. But we get a sweet scene where his son, Nathaniel, calls him. He was early in the morning where he's at. And he's saying that everybody's asleep. And it's about, oh, sorry. Um, so Hawkeye, since his hearing aid got smashed, he can't really hear his son. We do get a scene where, we do get a few angles of this scene. Where we hear his son talk, or we hear him say something to Hawkeye, we hear it as, but it's completely different than what Kate did as. You can hear, since he's not all the way deaf, but he can't barely hear, so he's like mixing up the words that his son is saying, and Kate can hear it. So Kate's hearing it, writing down what he says, and you know, having Hawkeye read off. He's like, oh, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry, buddy, you know, it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a really sweet scene, especially at the end where he was like, you know, it's okay you don't make it home for Christmas, because I know you're here and stuff. He's like, no, I'm no, okay. But he's like, I thought, I thought I'd come for Christmas, right? And he's like, I'll come. I'll come. And then right after that, we see Kate's eyes because she's starting to tear up because Hawkeye came and hears his son. His hair and that smell. Like this whole situation of him not being with his kids is kind of her fault. And Hawkeye's like, thanks for, you know, interpreting for me so I can talk to my son. And then we cut to the next day. Well, it's not the next day. It's still, it's still sunlight. They just cut back to Kazi and Echo. And Kazi's saying... We're just supposed to be just a low level sort of street crime. We're dealing with Hawkeye and stuff like that. Now we're trying to get into Ronin. I don't know if I want your uncle to, you know, get to know if everybody's saying. Well, I'm going to just say Kingpin because everybody's saying it might be Kingpin. I, well, I'm, I, well, it's not Kingpin. I don't want to be y'all's friend. So I don't know if your uncle finds out we're doing all this stuff. He might get in some big trouble. We're just supposed to be low level. You know what I'm saying? Then she starts to talk about how her father was a leader here. And she was, um, she, she, she said something about her father. And then he was like, your father took priority with his crow first before trying to get into other stuff. And he said, who's the leader of this now? You are. 
Exactly. And then we cut his leg. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we see Kate, a Hawkeye, just sitting outside in some Chinese restaurant that's also like a doctor. And Kate texts Hawkeye. And Hawkeye, you know, feels about racism. But he looks up, looks at his phone, and she says, good thing you're called Hawkeye and I have hawk ears. She says, ha ha, funny. Delete and block. <laughs> that was pretty funny to me. <laughs> so funny. Block. Delete. And the Chinese lady that owns the restaurant slash doctor comes in. She asks, Hark, I mean, Kate asks, can you fix this? You know, give me five minutes. You give me cash only. Then they cut, then they cut to our restaurant. So at first I thought they were just waiting for the hearing aid to be fixed. But she says five minutes. I don't know why you had a restaurant. But Kate just, just keeps talking and talking. Hawkeye is just... Because he can't hear. And he finally picks up the hearing aid so he already has it and puts it in. She's like, did you have that out the whole time? Hmm? <laughs> like, he just didn't want to listen to it. And throughout this whole conversation, we get a sweet scene where he's not... Or um, Kate's like, he, she's been working on his whole branding, marketing thing. And then she draws a little doodle of Hawkeye's... <laughs> Original costume from the comics, which is pretty funny. She's like, you can wear this, but all in purple. <laughs> you can wear this, all in purple. She also made like a little, um, <laughs> little six figure drawing of the tracksuit mafia. That was pretty funny. Made her laugh. That was so funny. And he's like, I'm not wearing that. She's like, why not? Has the H on the head for Hawkeye? Those will be supposed to be Hawk wings. No. What if it's all in black? Huh? <laughs> what if it's all in black? She's like, I'm <laughs> I'm not wearing it. And then he starts to go about how he's not a symbol for anybody. You know, he's supposed to be a ghost. He did not want this whole fame and glory. He's not an idol to anybody. And she says, Yes, you are. You're an idol to me. You know, I've only loved you since I was a kid. And you have your own family, your own life. But you put that all on hold just to save some stranger who is wearing the Ronin thing because you know that we're going to get hurt. You're a good person and an idol to look up to, Hawkeye. Don't, don't forget that. That was a really nice people. And they also start to talk about, I know Kate says, hold up, I bet you know who Ronan is. And you don't want to reveal the secret identity because that's like your best friend or something. Am I, am I, get, am I getting there? Am I right? Hawkeye just doesn't answer. He's like, uh. Uh-huh. And then she tries to sort of name Lucky the Pizza Dog. She does call him Pizza Dog, but he doesn't call him Lucky yet. She's still just going all over some names. And then we cut to them actually walking the dog outside. And then he says, and then he tells her, because he tells her that the dude, the dude you are fighting is called Kazu. Uh, Echo is not, the, well, Echo is the leader of the Tracks of Mafia, but there's somebody above Echo who we don't want to mess with. He's pretty powerful. And then we cut again to them in a the car, or then, then a taxi. Then she says, well, my mom owns Kate Bissup's security front. I could probably look up some names and some information about Jack, so if you really want to get on Jack. And about Kazu's mother stuff, you can find out in the database. Okay, I was like, huh. okay, that seems pretty smart. So they go to the, so they go to her mom's house. She starts to type on the security front to look up some information about Jack and the tracks of mafias and Echoes and all other. They don't know her name, Echo, but you know about Echo and Kazu and everybody. So she starts to type in some stuff. And when she types in Jack, it goes deny. Like she's instantly blocked out of the system. She's like, huh, that's kind of. Let me try something else. But Hawkeye, he hears, like, you hear something silent, and Hawkeye hears something, he's like, huh? And he walks off the camera. And Kate doesn't notice that until she gets blocked out of the system. She looks up, she's like, huh? What? Where'd where you go? And Hawkeye walks into another room. Before he steps all the way through the doorway, Jack actually has a Ronin sword out at Hawkeye's chin or his neck. He's like, stop right there. And Hawkeye's like, huh? And he looks at him. <laughs> you know, who are you just messing with? <laughs> and that's the end of the episode. Then we don't get after credits. And this is the scene I'm talking about where Hawkeye, he walks through the room, and then he instantly, well, Jack instantly pulls out the sword at his neck. He's like, oh, stop right there. Don't move. But Hawkeye just looks like, huh. <laughs> like, you know, he looks down at the sword, and like, Jack, like, that, that belongs to me. <laughs> what you doing, man? <laughs> what you doing? And that's the end of the episode, and we don't have any extra credits. So, this was a pretty good episode. A lot of jokes, a lot of sweet moments. I love the acting in this. It's really good. Uh, I, love, I love the banter and the, I just love the chemistry between Hawkeye and Kate Bishop. I love it so much. Um, Jimmy Renner and uh, I I gotta learn uh, Kate Bishop's real name. Her dad gave her that her real name. I don't know her actual real name. I really like this episode. It's really good. Can't wait for next week. I think this is only gonna be a three. 
it's only gonna be a six episode thing. So we just get three left. It seems it's gonna it seems like it's gonna be shorter because we got one and two together. So, you know, it's gonna be kinda shorter than usual. But hey, at least we get it, you know. I really like Hawkeye. Oh, that's right. Before I go, I did want to show you this. When you click on the Hawkeye um show before you click on the episode, it shows you this. I guess this is gonna be like the final suit they're gonna wear on the last episode. Kate Bishop's outfit looks awesome. Hawkeye's it looks cool but not cool at the same time. I think it's the arm. The arm is missing up for me. This is what you see before you click on the episode. Kate Bishop outfit looks really cool. The Hawkeyes, it looks cool, but not cool. I, I think it's the arm. The arm is really what's messing it up for me. Maybe you make those black, and if you want to, brighten up the purple just a tiny bit on the chest. But just make those arms black, and then it will work. I don't, I don't think those purple arms really work as a Hawkeye. But uh, other than that, uh, thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you all out there for being wonderful human beings. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>